In this video, we're going to learn about molecular formulas. So a molecular formula is just the actual formula that a compound has. Um, so for ionic compounds, the molecular formula will always be the same as the empirical formula. Um, but in the case of covalent compounds, the molecular formula is going to be some multiple of the empirical formula. Now, it might be a multiple of one, so that the molecular and empirical formulas are the same, but it might be that the molecular formula is two or three or four or more times the empirical formula. So, for example, we have CH2O, which is formaldehyde. That is the true molecular formula of formaldehyde. Um, and you can't reduce this down anymore. It's also the empirical formula. Um, in the case of vinegar or acetic acid, the molecular formula is C2H4O2. And if you ran analysis of this, you would find that there are um, two hydrogens for every one carbon and one oxygen in this substance, uh, acetic acid, just as there are in formaldehyde. So these two substances will have the same exact um, empirical formula, although their chemical properties are very different and their molecular formulas um, are definitely different. Um, similarly, sugar, uh, sucrose, is C11H22O11, and it is also a carbohydrate. CH2O is its empirical formula, um, just the same as uh, acetic acid and um, formaldehyde. So in order to determine uh, a molecular formula, well, here's a practice problem. Um, let's say that we have a sample of an unknown compound that's analyzed and determined to contain 12.3 grams of carbon, 1.45 uh, grams of hydrogen, and 2.87 grams of nitrogen by mass. If its molecular formula has a molar mass of 162.23 grams per mole, what is its molecular formula? Now, the first part of this question, up until right about here, um, this looks like an empirical formula problem but we can figure out molecular formula only if we're given the molar mass of the molecular formula. Um, so step one, we're going to have to determine the empirical formula. And to do that, we'll just do the same thing that we've done before. We will uh, convert the grams of carbon to moles of carbon, the grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen, and the grams of nitrogen to moles of nitrogen. And what we find uh, are these amounts. Next, we have to divide all three of these by the lowest among them, which is essentially setting the smallest among them to one. Uh, that would be the number of nitrogen. So we find that for every one mole of nitrogen, there are five moles of carbon and seven moles of hydrogen. Um, and so therefore, the empirical formula is C5H7N. Now, from here, the question is, is the true molecular formula the same as the empirical formula? Is it twice as much? Is it three times as much? Is it four times as much? Is it, you know, C5, um, sorry, C25, H35, um, N5, for example? Those would still have the same mole ratios that we found here. But given that we know the molar mass of the molecular formula, we can figure out what the molecular formula's true mass is. And the way that we do that is by uh, determining uh, the ratio of the molar masses of the molecular formula to the empirical formula. So the molar mass of the empirical formula, we're going to find as such, it is apparently 81.13 uh, grams per mole. And um, now we can take the ratio of the molar mass of the molecular formula to the molar mass of the empirical formula, which is 162.23 grams per mole over 108, uh, or 81.13 grams per mole. And we find that that comes out to pretty much exactly two. Um, so this indicates that the molecular formula weighs twice as much as the empirical formula. And so from that, we just take the empirical formula multiply everything by two, and our molecular formula is C10H14N2. And that's it. That's how you determine the molecular formula of a compound. Hope this video has helped. Feel free to leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.